One of the challenges with using the Flux series of models is that when generating images, skin can often come out looking plasticky, fake, unrealistic, or have an airbrush quality to them, which really takes away from the realistic aspect of the images that we're trying to create. This is especially true when trying to upscale or use tools like Pulin, which allows you to create additional images off of a base image that exasperate the issues resulting in very unrealistic looking skins. So today I'm gonna go over the various tricks and techniques on how we can get the best quality skin out of Flux models, both out of straight text to image prompts, as well as how we can try and save existing images that we've generated with Flux, other models, or with Pulid 2. So let's dive right in. So typically when trying to get the best skin out of Flux, we're gonna try and use one of three techniques. The first of which, which is the simplest, is just use a better model. While Flux is great, there have been a couple of fine tunes that have come out that improve significantly on the level of skin quality that skin that Flux is able to produce. My personal favorite is this one, Project O version two. I've tried out here a couple of prompts taken from Prom Crafters, so we can compare the skin quality of Project Zero versus Flux. So both of these images were created using the exact same prompt, the one on the left with Project Zero and the one on the right with the vanilla Flux dev model. And although the resolution is capped at one megapixel, we can see here on the image on the left, there is definitely a considerable amount of more skin texture when compared to the image here on the right, which really has that porcelain look and feel. Now, both of these characters are Asian and the one on the right can definitely get away with that a little bit more because it, this type of skin is often seen to have a porcelain texture. But if we look at this other example, we can see the same thing here with another prompt. We can see the one on the left was made with Project Zero and the two on the right were with Flux Dev. And in fact, I tried to run Flux Dev twice to see if we could get a better result. But the first one is pretty decent. The second one does get a bit worse. I tried a different seed. Both of these have the same seed. When compared with the Project Zero one, it's just phenomenal. There's so much more character in the skin, so much more fidelity. So just by using a different model, you can get substantially better results. And I have found this to be the case when trying to use Project Zero with Pulid over Flux Dev Vanilla. So that is the first technique. The second technique that is often used is typically in painting, where we're gonna go in, take these images and repaint the skin with a better model. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. A lot of workflows out there that I've seen use Allura to do the in painting on top of Flux. I have gotten very mixed results with this where maybe seven, eight times out of 10, I don't see a noticeable difference. So I'm not gonna dive into that too deeply in this video. We are gonna use this technique in part in the third technique, which I'm gonna get into, which is in painting with a different model. Now, one of the strengths of Stable Diffusion 3.5 is that it is very good at skin tones. So the workflow I'm gonna go over, we can use Stable Diffusion 3.5, or we can even use Project Zero, if we like the skin tones of that model, to go in and in paint the skin of images from situations that we're not happy with. So if we have a look here at the workflow, it runs from left to right, and it might look fairly complex, but it's actually not. It's a fairly simple, straightforward workflow. So let's go through it very quickly. Over here, we're loading up our Stable Diffusion 3.5 model. However, as I said, you can swap this out for Project Zero or any other model that you prefer the skin textures off. We have a LoRa loader over here. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, if there's a LoRa that you find that again, has very good skins, whether it's on top of Stable Diffusion 3.5 or it's on top of Project Zero, go ahead and plug it in here. And this model that we're specifying is not for generating an image. This is going to be the one that paints over the skin. Down here, we throw in the image that is going to have its skin fixed. And we can see here, this particular character suffers from that airbrushed skin look. It's a good starting image overall. I had this made on Flux 1.1 Pro, which is supposed to be the state-of-the-art Flux model. And the image is very good, but you can see here, definitely the skin's got that airbrushed painted look, which I don't like in a lot of the images. And because we reference this image a lot, I have it fed into this Anything Everywhere. This is a cool little node that allows you to set certain parameters, let's say, which are instantly accessible by every other node. You'll see what I mean as we progress through this. So the image is set here to Anything Everywhere. And then over here, we have a body skin mask. And you'll see that there's no link between image to here, but it does glow, which means that this particular image node, if I don't replace it, by default is going to use the Anything Everywhere node. So this is grabbing that image, 
And what this node does is it looks for and masks different components of someone, whether it's face, hair, glasses, or in this case, torso, skin, exposed arms and exposed legs. So what we're doing here is we're looking for any exposed skin, whether it's the torso, the arm, and so on, that we're going to inpaint. We spit out the mask where we put it into this mask composite. It's gonna combine all of those into a mask. Here we grow it slightly to give it a bit of a blur so that any inpainting is not very harsh. And then over here, it feeds it into a image mask and preview. This basically just shows us in dark, whatever has been masked overlaid on the image and we feed the mask down into the next group which goes into this skin body and painting and that mask comes all the way down here into set latent noise mask so what this is doing is we are feeding in the image again so no link here the vey is also connected to anything everywhere so we've got this anything everywhere here where the model the clip and the vey are fed in we then convert that into a latent no into a latent along with the mask. So we're feeding in the image, turning that into a latent, applying the mask, and then sending that combined latent. This case sampler is going to receive the model, which is our stable diffusion 3.5, our positive and negative prompts, which are written out here. And these are pretty generic. All we're doing is just saying, we want smooth, useful skin, fine pore, soft skin, texture, and so on and so forth. Because it's stable diffusion three, we can accept negative inputs. And here we're putting in some skin inputs that we don't want. And again, you can change these out. You could swap this out. If you want really bad skin, wrinkly skin, or more realistic skin, you can actually add in some of these, like the oily appearance, the wrinkles, and so on. So feel free to mess about. We feed those in. We have our combined mask latent image. And then we've got the vey plugged in here, which is optional, but because we've got it set to anything everywhere, it's automatically pulling it in. Now, this first pass of the case sampler doesn't actually touch the face. The face remains the same. What is happening here is we are in painting everything except the face. So in this case, the torso has been picked up, it's added a little bit more texture here, which I'm not gonna zoom into for obvious reasons. And once we've taken care of the body parts of the skin, the final image comes out and we can start working on the face. So we've got a face detailer here that once again is going to be using that model. And I like to break it up because if you try and do too much at once, you start to have certain issues. So now that the skin has been taken care of, it's supposed to show you here in the comparer, but it's not working. So I'm gonna pull up the images right now for you guys to have a look at. So we can see here that the skin has been adjusted slightly in the body area. There is a little bit of artifacting here. I'm not too worried about this because we, you know, we can just change the seed and get a different result. But the part that we're most interested in is the face area. So let's continue on to that. So once we have done the body area that gets fed into this face detailer group where we've got this face detailer node, part of the Comfy UI impact pack. And in here, it's pretty much the same. We've got the model clip and invade from anything everywhere. We've got the same positive and negative prompt from earlier. And then we've got a few nodes here that deal with the segmenting of the face. So for that, we're using the Ultralytics Detector Provider, the SAM loader. Those get fed into this, into the B-Box Detector and SAM model optional nodes respectively. Then we add in here this impact end value and we feed that into the B-Box and SAM dilation. That's basically how many pixels we want to dilate the mask. And there's a couple of parameters that we need to keep in mind when using Stable Diffusion 3. I've got here the max size set to 1024, steps 25, CFG 5.5, sampler Euler. The scheduler I'm using is beta. We feather it for five pixels and everything else I leave the same. Again, I'll leave this over here so you can have a look at the parameters. Feel free to pause it and double check that your parameters are matching up with it. And what that will do is that will output a couple of things. Number one, we can see here the cropped enhanced alpha comes out here and that just shows us that the face has been cropped out and redrawn in. Now, again, the image is unfortunately acting a little funny today. I'm not sure why, but if we have a quick look at the redrawn face area and compare it with the original image, we can already see that there is a decent amount of texture added back into the image. There are a few minor imperfections here. We can see a little mold. There are some freckles showing up here and just a little bit more texture on the skin overall, giving it a little bit more of that realism. However, we don't stop there. The workflow then goes and does another 
face pass. Again, adding in a little bit more detail. I'm just gonna add a save image here so we can compare the results since the comparer is not working. Okay, so after deciding to add in the save image, the comparers decided to behave, so we'll just use that for now. So we can see over here that this is the original image that I fed in, and this is what it looks like after one pass on face compare with the face detailer. Oof. Isn't that such a massive improvement? The face looks considerably more realistic. You've got that texture there, the imperfections that we mentioned earlier, just look at that, boom. Now, we put it through the face detailer a second time. So this is the image after giving it one pass, after two passes, this is what it looks like. Both images are acceptable. It comes down to personal taste. I personally find that this is a little bit more refined, but you could just as easily go with just the first pass. Now, to take it a step further, you might notice if we zoom in that the images are a little bit pixelated. This is because they're 1024 size images, meaning it's one megapixel. If we try and scale it up, we end up with a little bit of the, of the blurriness and lose a bit of detail. So one of the steps that I've added here at the very end is a few options for upscaling. Now, we've done all of this work to bring the skin textures back in on this one megapixel image. A lot of the upscaling techniques that I use absolutely obliterate the skin and you ended up with that plastically plasticky airbrush look when you were pushing the model up to two or four megapixels. So taking in mind everything that we've just done using Stable Diffusion 3.5 or the model of your choice that you've done, we can use the Ultimate SD Upscaler, which uses a model to break, so it upscales the image, breaks it up into smaller chunks, and then goes in and redraws it based on the size limitations of the model. So using Stable Diffusion 3.5, I have upscaled it to 2x. We can see the results of various upscaling approaches. So the first one up here is a very straightforward one. I just use a standard AirScan upscale. So we load the upscale model here. We do a standard upscale using model. And this is what Anne does, which is a kind of default way of upscaling. Okay, the comparer again here is not behaving, but if we zoom into the image here, you'll see what I mean with using a standard upscale. It's a pretty decent result. You know, we zoom in, we've got a little bit more crispness and quality, but you do get some areas that kind of start to go back to that airbrush look. For all intents and purposes, this is a pretty decent result, but we wanna try and one-up that. So this is my preferred option. This is using SD upscale with the Stable Diffusion 3.5 model. We feed in the image that we wanna upscale. We give it the positive and negative prompts. The model comes from anything everywhere. The vague comes from anything everywhere. And we also plug in an upscale model, which is this Erzgan. So what this does, if I remember correctly, is it will first upscale the model using this technique, use load upscale model with Erzgan to 2X, which we've specified over here. And then it will go in and draw over it using Stable Diffusion 3.5 to kind of bring in all of the missing details. So if we have a look here, I'll go over the parameters in just a moment. This is what the before looks like. Let's zoom in nice and tight so we can kind of see that we get a little bit of that loss of sharpness. It's still a very good image as I mentioned. However, after upscaling it with the Stable Diffusion 3.5, you can see here that there's definitely an increase in the crispness, the sharpness, the fidelity, and we have a pretty good skin texture after upscaling. Finally, just for comparison, I've added in here another group. I usually keep this disabled where we break up the upscaling components. So I use here another upscaling technique, which is called Langzos, which just, you know, upscales the image as it is. We feed that in to Ultimate SD Upscale with no upscale because we've upscaled it here. Over here, we define how much we're gonna upscale it. In this case, I'm taking the image parameters and multiplying them by two. If you wanted to do it by four, you'd change it by four. And then once it's upscaled, it just goes in and does the end painting. Now, this entire workflow that I've shown you guys is gonna be made available for free. And this accepts an image that you already have and you want to end paint the skin. However, if you want the entire workflow that includes text to image or Pulid and incorporates all of these, which you can see over here. This is using Pulid to generate the image and then goes straight into what I just showed you. 
I have another one which is for text to image. Those will be available on my Patreon, along with a bunch of other workflows that I found, experimented with, and put together that do essentially the same thing with different techniques. So this is a skin enhancer using a case sampler on the entire skin overall, combined with a florin, combined with using florins to generate the prompts for the skin. This is another approach that upscales and then does face detailing. So all of these will be available on Patreon. You can test and compare. You can see which one you like. So all of these will be available on my Patreon. And that's pretty much it. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon where you can get all of these cool workflows, as well as a whole bunch of other goodies and benefits, including additional Patreon-only workflows, one-click installers, and much, much more. If you have any questions about anything mentioned in the video, please do come by the Discord, as it's a great place to ask questions, chat with other community members, and try and solve any issues that you're having. Finally, if you want to stay updated on the latest AI news and my videos, please check out my newsletter, link down below, where we send out an email every one to two weeks with the latest videos and the latest AI news that you can read and catch up on. Finally, don't forget to check out Prom Crafters and Kaiju Gen. Prom Crafters is a fantastic repository and database where I get all of my prompts from for these videos. It's a very easy way to go through prompts that are curated, sorted, and segmented by different keywords that makes it really easy to understand what makes a prompt tick. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.